Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, I've had a lot of comments of ever since I started the blog, people wanting to see, uh, see the lab. They want a tour of the lab, so I thought I'd take you on a behind the scenes tour of the EEV blog lab. Let's go. It's in my garage, so it's... Whoop, come on in. My car's not here at the moment, so it might be a bit echoey, but here is the EEV blog lab. It's tiny. It's only about two metres by two metres, or four square metres. It's a really tiny lab, but uh, I think it's quite efficient and well set up. So, um, I'll give you a basic rundown of it. This is my electronics... Um, side of the bench here and this is uh, it's got the instrument racks and this is where I do most of my electronics work and on this side is um, more like a, um, a uh, manual craft type bench where I do a lot of gluing and the wife does some projects and and um, you know you can take bits apart and do things like that so um, and this is actually a bigger height because the bikes fit under here for convenient storage but it means that you can stand here and it's a good elbow height you can work from and the electronics bench um, I'll give you a good tip a good electronics bench should be between about 95 uh, centimeters and 100 centimeters or a meter high so you can actually work at it um, like this or if you sit in on a chair like this you can just um, sit here at a nice elbow height and it's it, it's a good working height so that you're close to your actual work and that's what makes a good electronics bench along with these um, instrument racks and having depth under here so you can put gear and things like that um, and as you can see I've got a swivel chair which is really handy I can just go from side to side it's it's really quite uh, nice not much room but it's all set up so uh, let's have a tour of the electronics bench shall we now um as you can see i'm a big fan of these um storage boxes and these storage tubs i've got a whole bunch of them up here and also up here there's many behind the back as well um and they contain a whole range of stuff test leads and uh, all sorts of gear and surplus stuff and things like that. Um, but the electronics bench, let's take a tour, shall we? Now, uh, basically, um, you're familiar with the Rigol scope I keep uh, going on about. Now, the reason I like it is because it's portable and the one thing you're not going to see in here is a computer. I basically don't have a computer in here. So when I'm working on my computer projects and things like that, I take the scope into the um, study where the computer is and I work on my projects in there. Now, uh, let's take a look at some of the other gear I've got here. Now, this is a, um, a quite a few people ask me about this one. This is a bit of an obscure bit of kit. It's a Keithley 261 Pico Amp current source. Um, it can actually go down to 10 Femto Amps. It's not something you'll find in uh, most labs, a current source, but it's it's special purpose and it's really handy um, for doing things like this. So you'll find that you'll accumulate um, special interest gear like this over the years. Now I'm I'm a big fan of um, just buying and selling gear as a hobby. So you won't find a lot of really high end um, instruments here. This is a pretty basic lab because I work in the industry and um, my workplaces have always had a really good lab setup. So I really only need something basic here for just, you know, um, really basic use. Now, we've got the um, Hewlett Packard bench meter. It's the 3478A. You've seen that in one of the blogs. Um, I've got a WaveTech 11 megahertz stabilized sweep generator. Um, a good electronics lab is still going to have an analog scope because they still provide, um, uh, you know, higher update rate, lower noise, and, and um, allows you to see signals. You can't really capture on a low end digital scope. Um, this one's actually 150 meg hay meg made in Germany. Um, real confusing to use but it's you know, it's really high quality and really well made. Uh, my meters, the Fluke 87 of course, the Dawson Metrowatt extra hit. Why two meters? Well you've got to have two meters really. Um, any good electronics bed, um, setup will have at least two meters measure voltage and current at the same time. Now um, I've 
over here I've got some power supplies. Now um, I built most of these power supplies myself. Um, these aren't all of them. I've got a um, one more inside and I've got a couple others scattered around here somewhere. Um, this is a 3 amp 40 volt um, adjustable current limit. One I built, this is a um, 25 volt, couple of amps, got a separate 5 volt output. This one's not current limited, but um, that's really handy, I built that one. This one's a, 40, um, a 15 volt 40 amp high current supply. Not something you'd typically use in your average lab, but when you really need the high power stuff, it's, it's pretty invaluable. Um, I've got my micro amp current adapter you've seen before. Um, I've got a logic probe. Um, not, you know, ever since the um, digital storage scopes came along, logic probe has gone out of favour, but I still have one. I use it occasionally. Um, pocket multimeter, of course, which I've explained before. Actually, I've got a couple of those. Um, I've got a separate capacitance meter because the ones inside multimeters just really don't cut it for um, very low end, uh, very low values of cap, and this one's more accurate as well. Um, I've got a flip, whoop. I've got a fluke uh, voltage, um, voltage, AC voltage detection probe. I highly recommend you get one of these. It could save your life one day. Um, what else have I got? I've got, a, I've got another function generator I built. I've got an ESR meter. Um, ah, decade resistance box. This is one of the coolest things, one of the handiest things I own. I built this when I was probably 10 or 11 or something like that, so it's very old. Um, it basically allows me to select any resistance from uh, 1 ohm or 10 ohms up to uh, 10 meg. And it's really handy. In fact, you need a couple of these. I should build another one. Uh, what else have I got here? Um, multimeters. I've got multimeters coming out my backside. I've got another metro hit one here. I've got another three fluke meters here. Um, I've got a Another digital meter, this is the first digital meter I ever got. Um, my cousin gave it to me, I think. It's a SAW ME533, and um, I was thrilled, and it still works. So I've still got it out of nostalgia, really. I don't use it. And here's another gem. My f very first multimeter I ever bought. Uh, I got this when I was about eight. I saved up my pocket money and, and bought this. It's a Radio Shack or a Tandy 20k ohms per volt um, analog multimeter, and it still works, and it's still handy, and I still use it. I love it. Uh, I've got another analog meter. In fact, I've got another two meters. I've got a triplet one somewhere. This is a Radio Shack Micronta uh, FET input one. I've got another couple of instruments up there somewhere. Um, I've got air dust sprays, cleaning solvents, um, all sorts of stuff. I've got um, a couple of more instruments up here, which um, are part of my uh, ones I got published. Um, I've got a whole bunch of uh, gear up here. Well, I won't go into that yet. Um, as you can see, um, component cabinets. I'm a big fan of component cabinets. They're so handy. These two up here, I've had for um, since I was 10 or 12 or something like that. A very long time. And some of the parts in there are are ancient, just as old, so I haven't sorted those in years. Um, now, I highly recommend um, you, sort, you sort your resistors into um, E12 or E24. I actually sort mine into the E12 range, so, the, you know, so 10 will actually have 10 ohms, uh, 100 ohms, 1K, 10K, all in there. Um, those labels, once again, they're about 20 years old, I think. Um, what else have we got? We've got things like a... Every electronics um, lab's got to have a breadboard. I've got two or three of these, um, some much larger ones. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of uh, these leads which go with the breadboard. So I highly recommend you get these pre-cut ones. I've got like hundreds of them already pre-cut. Uh, what else have we got? Um, okay, these are red. Um, I'm a real big fan of these little red uh, trays here because when you're taking gear apart you can put different screws into different trays. It's really handy. Highly recommend you get some. Now um, I've got a basic ESD set up here. So I've got um, one of these uh, ESD uh, binding uh, points here which goes down to mains earth and this one here goes through to a basic ESD mat and this is my wrist strap. Um, I just take basic precautions occasionally and things like that. I've got uh, two soldering irons. One's a Heiko 
926. I've had that for 15 or 20 years, I think. It's been replaced several times. And I've also got a Pace ST25. Now, if you're going to have two irons, which I highly recommend, um, you should have the same one, so you can uh, exchange tips and things like that. But I got this Pace one for free, so, you know, wasn't going to look a gift horse in the mouse mouth. And why do you need two irons? Well, it's essential for SMD work. If you're, if you're trying to get an SMD component off, having two irons, bang, straight off. A, a good electronics lab will have at least two soldering irons with a range of tips, um, which I might do a blog on in the future. And that's the electronics side of the bench. And, um, well, also I've got, um, I've acquired uh, kits, SMD um, resistors, SMD capacitor kits. I've got, um, this one's rail to rail op amps. Um, this one's inductor kits, more inductor engineering kits. So you can just choose uh, the right type of uh, component you need if you're doing a prototype or something like that. Um, this is a lab, a chip lab resistor kit and things like that. There, those kits are real handy for making those one-off projects. Um, now I've got much more um, uh, tubs up here. I like the separate tubs instead of these um, uh, pull-out drawers. These are better. Like in here I've got, uh, woo, what have we got in here? This is um, full of um, various op amps and um, uh, ICs and things like that, all in their original Farnell packets and things like that I've acquired over the years. That's a real pop puree. There's another one for, uh, for semiconductors, diodes and things. There's capacitors, there's resistors, there's a, a complete 0603 um, E24 resistor um, thing. There's some old projects, there's tubes of ICs, there's reels. I've got, uh, look down here, I've got a whole bunch of uh, reels and things like that that I've acquired over the years of various parts. And there's a whole bunch of um, stuff stored in these tubs and up here and in these cabinets. I hand built these cabinets. Um, I hand built these um, shelves and I assembled all this and built the tables myself and it's just really handy. Um, this is actually a high voltage 300 volt power supply. Um, I've got a uh, hot melt glue gun, essential item for any electronics lab really. And there's the tripod that I sit the camera on and I do the vlog. So I sit here, look at the camera and I shout and I rant on and that's what I do. So, um, that's a tour of the EEB Blog Lab. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks. See ya.